But dear friends, today I would like to meditate on the way of the cross. Let me begin with a story. During World War II in the Pacific Front, there was an island that had the utmost importance for both sides. That was the island of Iwo Jima. Those who know so history will be able to tell how cruel and difficult this battle was. On the part of the Japanese soldiers alone, there was around 90,000 casualties. Great heroism was shown from both sides. But today I want to tell you of an incident that serves my purpose. It is said that at the very end, the Japanese general, knowing full well that they had lost the battle, and you have to remember that for the Japanese culture, surrender was not an option. So the general, knowing full well this, he organized whatever men he had left in order to lead an attack on the American troops. Now, it is said that as he was about to send his men to a certain death, he didn't want to fight as a general, but rather he wanted to fight as one of them. And so it is said that he removed his insignia in order to fight shoulder to shoulder with the lowliest of his soldiers and together with them. And they fought mainly using bayonets and swords. My friends, God in his justice after we had sinned was compelled to punish us with death and suffering. These two, you could say, belong to us after our sins death and suffering. But God was such a good father. He loved us so much, even though we don't deserve it, that he couldn't take to see us bear the punishment alone. And he descended from heaven, the second person of the Most Holy Trinity, and came and took that sentence with us. He took upon himself the sentence of death, which belonged to us, and he carried it with us. He fought within our lines, he fought with us to give us an example, to encourage us, and most importantly, he came to fight the battle himself. So you could say in a certain way that the example of this general is a figure of what our Lord did with us. My dear friends, today as we meditate on the way of the cross, contemplate your Savior as a good general then that comes down to your level, that goes himself first to the battle. He takes his weapon of choice, the Holy Cross, and he tells you, My beloved son, take up your cross and follow me. Try, my, good, my dear friend, to see the good Jesus as he carries his cross. See him as he stumbles along with blood all over his body, with blood over, all over his face, with burning pains, with a crushing weight on his back. As you see your master, your general, your teacher doing this, let me speak to you of the lessons that our Lord gives you. The first lesson that our Lord is giving you is this one. Don't run away from the cross. My dear friends, you hear a cross and you hear suffering and you fear. I speak of the cross and it seems something negative. It seems as if it was something sad to consider. But that's not the case, it's not at all. The cross is, my dear friends, a song of triumph, the weapon of our redemption, a source of great blessings. When I say cross, look before you and you see this ominous figure of good rising in your future, suffering as it's coming in your life. But I ask you now to see it Turn from that darkness of the wood into a figure of light. Your cross, your suffering that is coming your way, is your pathway to heaven. Your door to heaven is shaped in the form of a cross. And that's what I'm trying to tell you today, that the cross sufferings that come in your life are a good thing. They are, as a matter of fact, already a victory. The cross is your treasure of glory. Everything that you suffer will bring you a fortune of glory. It will bring you happiness. It will bring you love. And that for all eternity. 
When you see cross in your life coming, when you see sufferings in your life coming, think of them as a chest that is filled with gold. Think of it as like a bag that is filled with precious pearls. The cross is worth much more than all of these because it means for you eternal treasure, eternal rewards. The cross is a good thing. The cross is also for you a purifying remedy. It is your medicine. It's the weight of the cross that prevents you from being lost in sin and pleasures. It is the load of suffering in your life that keeps you always humble and prevents you from being blinded by pride. Suffering in your life, the cross, it's an anchor that keeps you always close to our Lord, never leaving you go astray or get lost too far. While without the cross, you will be lost in your own whims, in your own caprice. The cross is a good thing. Don't run away from it, then. Keep in mind that every suffering comes with multiplied goods, good things. You might not see them today, but you will see them someday. Our Lord, my dear friends, also instructs us in another thing, and that is that we never carry the cross alone. You see that when our Lord carried his cross, as you see in the Stations of the Cross, He had a man help him, Simon of Cyrene. And our Lord did that to show us that God will never leave us alone to carry our crosses. And so if the thought of all the goodness that comes from the cross was enough to make us not fear it anymore, how much more should we lose the fear of suffering when we consider that Jesus Christ himself will help us carry the cross? Because yes, Jesus had a man help him carry his cross. But you, you will have our very same Lord Jesus Christ help you carry yours. Jesus Christ will be your Cyrenian, your Simon of Cyrene. He had said before, Come to me those who are burdened, and I will refresh you. And he, th he said also, My yoke is sweet and my burden is light. You know, my dear friends, The yoke is that piece of wood that you put on the shoulders of an oxen to make them work throughout the day, to make them till the soil. In the back, there is a farmer riding, you could say, and he's striking the oxen to push them forward. But today see this good farmer, your loving father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And he gets off the rig, and he takes the yoke off your shoulders, or he takes it with you, I would say, rather, You are the oxen, but the farmer comes and he takes the yoke, the yoke on his shoulders. And instead of hitting you with lashes, he helps you carry it. He helps you do your chore by taking the yoke with you, the yoke of the cross. And so truly you can say that his yoke is sweet and his burden is light. There's another lesson that our Lord gives us as he carries his cross to Calvary. And it is this. The road of this life is filled with falls, but we should never lose heart. We ought to get up and persevere. In the same way that our Lord, as he was walking towards Calvary with his cross, got up over and over again and persevered until he made it to the end. Remember at this moment, remember that Jesus Christ was the God of hosts. He could have had strength to carry the cross like a giant to Calvary. Instead, however, he willed to fall, and he willed to fall not once or twice, but many times. Why so? So that he could be there with you in the mud, in the mire, in the rocks of your own failures and miseries. He was there in your first fall, when you fell from innocence, when you thought that all was lost, when you thought that you couldn't recover, and he picked you up from your same shame and from your sadness, and gave you another chance. He fell to get you up. He was there on your repeated falls of rashness, of stupidity, of ignorance and weakness, when as a teenager you fell over and over again and struggled crawling to get up. He was there to not let you get lost. He was there calling you repeatedly. He was there taking the kicking, the beating, all those blows, 
from the soldiers so that you wouldn't take the blows and the kicking and beating from the devil. He took the insults, the mockery, the shame, so that you wouldn't have shame to confess. He allowed himself to be crushed by the wood of the cross, so that you wouldn't be crushed at that time by the weight of your sins. He fell to get you up. And he is there and he will be there in those faults of full consent, your sins of adulthood, the full betrayals, the forgetfulness, when you're not ignorant anymore and you cannot plead stupidity or rashness anymore, when your sins are the result of malice, of a conscious decision, and therefore they are much more wicked. But even then you would have thought yourself lost, deprived, beyond all mercy, but he was also there. He lost all his strength when he was falling the third and the other times. His arms were failing. He also couldn't get up. To show you that what you cannot do, God can do. And that if your strength fails, God's strength doesn't. And that what for you is impossible, for God is not. And he fell in that way until the very last of his way to the cross, so that he could raise you up, if necessary, to the very last, to the very end of your life. My dear friends, from the stations of the cross, from the way of the cross, what our Lord did in there, we can learn much more. There are many lessons, but I don't want to leave you without mentioning another one. Our Lord, in the way to Calvary, teaches us that we have a mother. My soul, look at the fourth station. Jesus willed to make this known, the encounter of him with his mother, so that you would also know that throughout your life there would be another guardian of your soul, you could say another guardian angel, another helper, and that would be a mother, a mother that loves you with an invincible love, who is the mother of God and your mother as well, the sweet Virgin Mary. Look at her in the way to Calvary when our Lord carries his cross. She would not be turned away by soldiers. There was a fierce crowd ready to lynch anybody who would not uh, abide and she would not fear them. She broke through soldiers. She broke through the mob. She broke through enemies. She broke through devils to get to her son to help him. And you could say, really, that if it had been God's will, she would have carried the cross herself. But see now you, little one that hears me. What will turn her away from you? Whatever you suffer, your mother Mary will be always there by your side. Whatever threats there are in your life, she will not abandon you. Only our sins could prevent her to come to us, but even then I dare to say, and what a prodigy it is to consider this, even our sins can't stop the Virgin Mary. She is truly, you could say, more than a force of nature, because she is a force sent by God, able to break through the hardest walls, able to break even through our sins. She brings grace to souls that at times reject it. She brings forgiveness to those who don't deserve it. She saves those who were already doomed. And I dare to say that this mother will go to the very doors of hell to bring a soul out. In your way that you're walking in this life, she will be there and she will never abandon you until the moment you expire. In the same way that she was there for her son, and she never abandoned her son, even till the grave. All you ought to do, if you want to receive her help, all you want to do, if you want to save your soul, is accept her help. Follow her advice. Follow her son, carrying your cross through your life. To end today then, my dear friends, let us remember these lessons from our Lord, and rejoice, Rejoice in the comfort and great confidence that they give us. First, that the cross that means suffering is a good thing. It brings with it great blessings. 
Second, that you will never carry the cross alone. Third, that Jesus will always be there to raise you up no matter how many times you fall. That to the very end of your life. And fourth, that you can also rest assured that the Virgin Mary will be standing next to you until the moment of your departure. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.